In the previous lesson, we learned how to define the profile model and display the existing ground profile. In this lesson, we're going to begin designing the vertical geometry elements for the London Road vertical alignment. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to create the vertical geometry lines by station and elevation. We're also going to learn how to create the vertical geometry lines by slope and length. And we're also going to learn how to review the vertical geometry lines as well. To create the vertical alignment for London Road, we're going to begin by placing the vertical geometry lines. Before we start placing our geometry, let's make sure our active feature definition is still set to geom underbar baseline. So review the feature definition toolbar and make sure that it's still set active. We're going to be continuing in the geometry design file. The previous lesson, we learned how to create the existing ground profile. So now we're going to go ahead and start placing some vertical geometry elements. In the feature definition toolbar, toggle on the chains command tool again. When the chains command tool is enabled, the next element is automatically connected to the previous element without having to select the start point each time. The next thing we want to do is go over to the Geometry tab under the General Tools and select Civil Toggles and select Civil AccuDraw. Civil AccuDraw is used for precision input with Civil Geometry and we will use it to place profile elements by station and elevation. Activate Civil AccuDraw by selecting the Toggle Civil AccuDraw button. This will expand the Civil AccuDraw toolbar. Select the first icon on the toolbar. This is used to place station and elevation. Next, navigate up to the Geometry tab and locate the Vertical panel and go to the Lines category and select Profile Line Between Points. From here, you're going to see the Heads Up prompt attached to your cursor now has some additional information. It has some information to enter a station and a Z value. In this case, the Z value is referring to the elevation. And we also have a prompt that says enter start point. What we're going to do here is we're going to place a beginning point for our vertical geometry line at station 50 plus 00. And we're going to place it at an elevation of 166.341. So the start point, we're going to key in 50 plus 00. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. Key in 166.341, press enter on your keyboard to lock the value. That's going to define the start station for our line. Once you do that, move your cursor over into the profile model view and left click to accept it. And you'll see the line is dynamically attached to your cursor and being displayed in the profile model view. Next point we want to place is at station 57 plus 16. So to do that, we're going to key in 57 plus 16 in the station key in field. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. And then our elevation that we're going to set is 172.31. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. And that will set the length and the slope for that particular line at those particular stations and elevations. Left click to complete. And then you'll notice you're still inside of the line between points command because we had toggled on the chain commands tool. Notice as you're placing the lines, the slope and the length display as you move the line in the profile model view. In addition to placing the line by station and elevation, you can also place it using a length and slope. So let's do that next. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle off Civil AccuDraw. I'm also going to close it. So now let's place some lines using length and slope. So I want to place a 700 foot line. So in the key in field, key in 700, press enter. Use the left or right arrow key to navigate to the next field to place the slope. And we want to keep place a slope of minus 2%. So key in minus 2, press enter. That's going to lock that in. And notice the dynamic text is showing you the slope value as well as the length. So from here, we're going to left click to accept that line and continue placing the rest of our vertical geometry elements. So next thing I want to place is I want to place a 1200 foot line. So key in 1200 in the length field. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in the value. Use the left or right arrow key to toggle to the slope field. And key in 1% for the slope. So type in 1, press enter. That's going to lock in that value at 1%. And 
for a length of 1200 feet. Left click to accept that line and then place the final line. This line is going to be placed at 940 feet length. Press enter on the keyboard to lock in that value. Use the left or right arrow key to navigate to the slope field. Key in minus 0.5 for minus 0.5%. Press enter on the keyboard and that'll lock in that final end point there for us and then left click to accept. At this point you can do a right click or hit escape on your keyboard to exit the command. Then also go back up to the feature definition toolbar and toggle off the chains command to deactivate that. Now that we've learned how to place our lines, let's take a look at how we can review the information and make changes if needed. So I'm going to navigate up to the element selection tool in the geometry tab. Let's select that. I'm going to zoom down into the profile model view, the location of our first line. And I'm going to go ahead and select it. And you'll see the dynamic text appear. Zoom in a little bit closer so you can see the dynamic text. So you can see the slope and the length there. If you need to make changes to the slope or length, you can simply select the dynamic text. And in the input field here, you can key in a new value if needed for each one of those values. Also notice the drag handles are very similar to the ones that we had for the horizontal elements, or it gives us access to trim or extend or move a line just by hovering our cursor over the drag handles. Also notice when we hover our cursor over the beginning point and the ending point, it shows us more dynamic text for the station and elevation, and we can also make changes to the station and elevation by simply selecting it and keying new values in in the input field. To deselect the line, simply left click in the view or right click to deselect the line. Let's continue reviewing the rest of our lines in our profile model here. So I'm going to go ahead and fit my view. I'm going to right click. I'm going to left click to select the next line. And you can review the slope and the length of each one of our lines. Make sure we entered that properly. On this last tangent line here, I want to make a change to this so that it better matches our existing ground at the end point here. So let's go ahead and zoom in in that area. Select the line. And then grab the drag handle. And just let it snap to the existing ground line there and then left click to accept that. That's going to give us a better tie in point there. So we're going to tie it back into the existing ground in that location. Once you're done, simply fit your view and then we continue on. So the next step in the process is going to be to create the vertical curves between our lines. So we'll have one vertical curve here, one here, and one here. And we'll take a look at how to do that in the next video. So in this video, learn how to create the vertical geometry lines for our vertical alignment for London Road. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.